get one page now here today we're going to look into this microsoft surface go now this is a 10 inch tablet now it is like the surface range where you actually can get a keyboard for it it's a type cover um, at the moment this I came across my desk and I actually, unfortunately, we didn't have a type cover ordered in time for it, so it hasn't actually arrived. But I've been using this like a normal tablet and I've been hooking up external keyboards to it and it's been working quite good there. So what's really interesting now, this product has been around for a year now. Um, at the start, it was a little bit pricey, but now that after a year, it's actually come down in price and it's actually at a very sweet spot at the moment. And that's the reason why I'm actually doing a review on this one now again. So with the price drop, now here in Australia, the Surface Go, actually there's actually three flavors of the Surface Go. So the first one, which is a four gig RAM and it's got 64 gig hard drive, I say, don't even look at it, it's really, just a bit too unspected for these days anyway. So um, for my testing itself, this one here, particular model I've got here is the eight gig with 128 gigs. Even that I find that's just barely enough to do what you need to do. So the lower spec model of the four gig uh, RAM one, I, I say just save yourself money and hassle, just go up to the eight gig. Uh, RAM version. Now the third version is the 8 gig of 128 with the LTE support in there. So uh, this one is the just the Wi-Fi only. Now here in Australia, this particular just the tablet itself, the 8 gig RAM version, you're looking at $670. Now to get the type cover, you're, just, you're looking at an extra $150. And I do recommend to get the type cover for it. Doing in tablet boards, it's decent, but you do miss having, just it's because of Windows. Uh, it's still not 100% great in tablet mode. There is a tablet mode, which is what I've got it in, and it's still not that fluid. Still got to be needs that we worked at, not like the iOS, or now it's actually called iPad OS. Uh, that's just fantastic, and also the same with Android as well. You can see the pricing has dropped a fair bit, um, and it's definitely much, much more, fair price for the hardware I think it is these days in a way. Now I'm going to give you the bad news first straight up. After testing out this, now this is the, the higher model, now this does come with a Pentium with two cores, now there is no turbo boost on those two cores, so they're actually at 1.6 gigahertz and they stay at that rock steady. Now I've done testing, stress testing on that and it pretty much stays at 1.6 gigahertz, it does not move from there which is kind of good. Now that also affects the actual the heat of this thing here. Now the heat of this is pretty much the same the way around. Um, it's, uh, you, I wouldn't, I normally do sound testers on these things for like how loud the fan is, but these surfaces, surface, surface go, it is completely passive thermal solutions to it. So there's actually no fan to actually spin it around, so it makes no sound. Now, as for the heat on this, now when I was stress testing the CPU on this, I barely even felt much difference at all um, from it. So it, it is pretty good in terms of like heat wise. So you can hold it anywhere, you will barely feel it, even when it's stressed out there. Now where the actual heat, if you do feel a little bit heat when the, where the CPU is, and it's just located just underneath the world facing camera, it's around about in the middle there. You feel a very tiny little bump in heat, but I would say it's just only a little bit noticeable, truthfully. It's so marginal that I'll probably say it's, I wouldn't even stress about it. That's how marginal it is. One of the good things about this is that it's size and so nice having a nice 10 inch size. It's a little bit better than your phones and stuff like that, but great to like move around, hold around. And, and truthfully with this type of, it's actually got a kickstand here now. Um, and I actually quite liked it because I actually used the kickstand as a holder for there. Uh, so it's really nice to have it. Unlike the normal, you can hold it like a normal, but having the kickstand just a little out, just slip a few fingers in great support and great there. You can also use it in portrait mode and it's fine there as well too, so great thing there. Now, what I say the bad news is, is it is great doing single tasks. Now, what it struggles in is multitasking and it's really nice when if you've got a single dedicated sort of application one at a time, that's what this is really good for. But for multitasking, if you're trying to do a few applications at the same time, that's when it struggles and you do feel a little bit of a laggy and you do feel that it sometimes has a little bit of a slowness to it. But else, 
if you're just single tasking, web browsing, watching a movie, streaming, just doing some office low productivity work, that's what this is really good for. And I would definitely recommend this for, especially how light it is. Now the actual weight of this is looking at about 524 grams. Now that's with the, uh, the type cover. So that's pretty light. I like that, how light this is, just great anyway. As for the battery life in this, so this is the eight gig RAM with the 128 gigs. Now I actually boosted this up to like max out the CPU and performance mode we're still getting about three hours here now with on better battery mode you're only a little improving a little bit so you're looking around about four hours on battery life so this here is really does require you to have this plugged into power so you're not looking for all day life on this thing here unlike the ipad so definitely it's a little bit different there but hey if you're just doing some light work this is great for that now, as for the speakers here, you know, it's a bit of a surprise to me. I was expecting some really nasty sounds out of these things here, but it actually is not too bad. So they are looking at the top here and they are front facing, which is great to help in getting a little bit more sound into your there. And it wasn't like crazy tinny. Um, it had a little bit of bass, not that crazy good bass, but still, that actually what surprised me. Now, I did do the sound test on how loud it can go, and I pretty much on a decibel meter. At the loudest peak, it managed to pull 74.2 decibels. So that's not bad at all. It's not really crazy loud, but that's not bad enough. Enough for you to like watch movies and stuff like that. But still, if you really want a nice, good experience, plug it in the headphone, because as for the port wise, it does still have a headphone jack. That's great. Now, since we're at the ports, while talking about the ports, now what ports it's got is pretty much you're looking at, it's got a USB-C. Now, this is a USB-C, it's not Thunderbolt. So it's still nice to see the USB-C there. So you can actually plug in some of the new docks, which I'll talk about in a little bit later, but it does not have your normal USB-A. So you do need to carry some dongles around with this at the moment if you're connecting to a bunch of stuff. The actual top of the Surface Go does have a power button and some to volume up and volume down button. And that's pretty much it. It's all pretty much clean of that. Then it's got two cameras. You've got the front facing camera, which is for webcam. And then you've got the world facing camera as well so you can take photos in front like a normal tablet as well. So it's great in sort of sense. So it's got all the little basic needs that you need for it, which is great. It is magnetic on the left hand side here, which you can house a Surface Pen. The other thing I like to mention about the Surface Go is that it's also got underneath behind the actual kickstand is a micro SD card reader, which means you can actually expand the memory on this. So you can actually, it might be slow storage, but at least it's hidden away and you can actually use that as storage. So definitely try and use that maybe as a secondary hard drive if you're running out of space on 128 gig, which I'm more than likely think you would. And if for the 64, you're definitely going to run out of space of that one there. But definitely use the micro SD card reader here that's built into it and it's nicely hidden away so it's definitely won't get pringed around if it needs to. It also has the Surface Connect port there which is great so you can actually connect the Surface Dock which I actually tested out and that I'm not going to do too much of that. It does work with dual monitors, great for that. So this is fantastic to pair that up with. Now I did also try to use my Dell WD19 TV dock and plugged it into this and pretty much it works fine, it does charge the actual Surface Go, which is great, it carries all the ports is fine, and I was able to manage to get dual screen from it, plus the built-in screen, so that's free displays there. And it was quite happily just, um, driving those two screens, doing what you need to do, doing video as well, and things like that. So definitely, you can actually use this with dual screens. Now as for the third monitor, now that was the issue when she plugged in the third monitor, it was either having issues kind of detecting it or it wasn't able to um, give enough good refresh rate or just even resolution wise. So three monitors, it definitely cannot go there. So you won't be able to pass two external monitors on the Surface Go. Now that's also for the Surface Dock as well. That's the exact same problem as well too. Now who I would recommend this for? With the price drop of the Surface Go, I definitely can recommend it for the basic user who just wants to run on Windows and just do a few basic softwares. Definitely would be good for that. Now, if you do presentations, now just be mindful, you do need to probably more than likely carry a dongle with you. So do add the price of a dongle 
to the price of this to so you can actually weigh up the other competitions there now this is also very good for people who do office type of works who actually use extensions um, if more than likely the android if you're using android or even the ipad version of office you can use you know type in a way but you cannot use extensions i'm um, talking about plugins and stuff like that so for as a student you'd be looking at probably or ph doing your phds you're looking at doing your referencing points where you actually would then use your plugins to do regular referencing there to help you out so that's really good for that so whereas you can't really do that for android um, office or even ipad office and like that because that's really just the office you know plain vanilla suite there so this is really good for that as well now as for anyone else i will probably suggest this is just very good to carry around with you especially as a price point it is a definitely a great price tablet now since its price drop now as a recording of this video i do know that the surface x is coming out and more likely that product is to try to replace the surface go now the surface x is a little bit of a different thing it will be more expensive than the surface go but what it does have very different is that will house an arm processor whereas this still runs off a normal desktop processor but it is a low power mobile version of a desktop processor so it is still the x86 version so you can still install your normal application whereas the surface x i still haven't got it yet in my hands yet but it's going to be interesting what applications we can install on that one there so this is really good for your little um, run around sort of computer there and also just basic stuff there which is great and yet you still have your normal windows there whereas the surface x uh, I'm going to be interested to see what comes out with that one there. I am definitely hoping I get my hands on that very soon. Hopefully you find this video informative or enjoyed it. Give it a like. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. I do try to upload a new video every Tuesdays and Fridays. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I will see you next video.